I say unto you, Whosoever committeth sin is the servant of sin, and the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the Son abideth forever. If the Son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. I know that ye are Abraham's seed, but ye seek to kill me. Because my word hath no place in you. I speak that which I have seen with my father, and ye do that which ye have seen with your father. They and said, Hello, good morning. Welcome to Line by Line Bible Studies. We're continuing our study today in the Proverbs, chapter 30. And um, we can just read it. It's, you know, we've entered a new area of the structure. Anyway, yeah, hold on here. I did bring this one. Picture view. There we go. Let's see if it's awake. There it is. All right, here we go. the whole thing you know I'll just say it ahead of time here we go the words of agur the son of jeche even the prophecy the man spake unto ithiel even unto ithiel and Yukol. sorry fellows surely i am more brutish than any man and have not the understanding of a man I neither learn wisdom nor have the knowledge of the holy. Who hath ascended up into heaven or descended? Who hath gathered the wind in his fists? Who hath bound the waters in a garment? Who hath established all the ends of the earth? What is his name? And what is his son's name, if thou canst tell? Every word of God is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. Add thou not unto his words, lest he reprove thee, and be thou found a liar. Two things have I required of thee. Deny me them not before I die. Remove far from me vanity and lies. Give me neither poverty nor riches. Feed me with food convenient for me. Lest I be full and deny thee. And say, Who is the Lord? lest I be poor and steal and take the name of my God in vain. Accuse not a servant unto his master, lest he curse thee, and thou be found guilty. There is a generation that curseth their father and doth not bless their mother. There is a generation that are pure in their own eyes and yet is not washed from their filthiness. There is a generation, oh, how lofty are their eyes, and their eyelids are lifted up. There is a generation whose teeth are as swords, and their jaw teeth, I'm sorry, and their jaw teeth as knives to devour the poor from off the earth and the needy from among men. The horse leech hath two daughters, crying, Give, give! There are three things that are never satisfied. Yea, four things say not, it is enough. The grave and the barren womb, the earth that is not filled with water, and the fire that saith, um, and the fire that saith not, it is enough. I'll read that one more time. The grave and the barren womb and the earth. Um. All right. The grave and the barren womb, the earth that is not filled with water, and the fire that saith not, it is enough. The eye that mocketh at his father, and despiseth to obey his mother, the ravens of the valleys shall pick it out, 
and the young eagles shall eat it. There be three things which are too wonderful for me, yea, four which I know not, the way of an eagle in the air, the way of a serpent upon a rock, the way of a ship in the midst of the sea, and the way of a man with a maid. Such is the way of an adulterous woman. She eateth and wipeth her mouth, and saith, I have done no wickedness. For three things the earth is disquieted, and for four which it cannot hear. For a servant when he reigneth, and a fool when he is filled with meat. For an odious woman when she is married, and an handmaid that is heir to her mistress. There be four things which are little upon the earth, but they are exceeding wise. The ants are a people not strong, yet they prepare their meat in the summer. The conies are but feeble folk, yet make their houses in the rocks. The locusts have no king, yet go they forth, all of them by bands. The spider taketh hold with her hands, and is in king's place, palaces. The spider taketh hold with her hands, and is in king's palaces. There be three things which go well, yea, four are comely in going. A lion which is strongest among beasts, and turneth not away for any. A greyhound, and a good, um, a greyhound, and he goat also, and a king, against whom there is no rising up. If thou hast done foolishly in lifting up thyself, or if thou hast thought evil, lay thine hand upon thy mouth. Surely the churning of milk bringeth forth butter, and the wringing of the nose bringeth forth blood. So the forcing of wrath bringeth forth strife. Here comes the words of Lemuel. And I, I gotta look that way. I think that <laughs> was a nickname for Solomon, if I'm not mistaken, but um, that may be a mismemory. We'll check that out when we get to it. Okay. Who is Augur, the son of Jack? Uh, I don't, you know, I don't know. I'd have to look in my Bible. I don't have it. So maybe we're going to be in this next week too. So I'll, uh, well, I do have my Bible around here somewhere. Oh yeah, it's buried here with these other books. Here we go. But um, yeah, we could look at that. But uh, let's let, let's look at the words more than the man right now. We'll we'll take a look at that later. I'm not gonna. I'd rather look a little ahead of time and then just give it to you than do the painful thing of like watching me unpack it. Let's look at what he said. First things he says, I am more brutish than any man. It usually means brutish, uh, you know, bestial, you know, un, un, you know, un, it's sort of subhuman, you know, more like a beast. You know, that's what we, <laughs> you know, um, sometimes it's just the way you, uh, you know, it's a characterization of oneself. You know, I'm I'm a worm and not a man, as it says in Psalm 22, because of our lowness. You know, we are not living up to what <coughs> man should aspire to, or what wisdom aspires to. That's what he's saying. I'm having like a throat issue here. All right, but uh, yeah. Uh, the word brutish. Let's see what it says. Okay. <coughs> yeah, uh, here we go. Um, that, this is what happened last time. It just means brutishness. To be a brute. Like, I, you know, like... I, that, but it makes me like, okay, wait, let's see what the... I'm, gonna, I'm going on my usually correct understanding of what it means... But the definition, yeah, brutish stresses likeness to an animal or low intelligence in base appetites or in behavior based on instinct and et cetera, et cetera. And that Hebrew word answers to this. Uh, see if I switch it over there. See brutishness. Great. Thanks. And it properly means a foot as consumed by extension of cattle. That's why I said quadruped. It's, quite, it's related to the idea of being dumb cattle. People are, you know, sheeple. I'm, a, I'm just a sheeple, you know. Hey, me too, you know. I always, you know, the thing is, I've always tried to be, um, <clears throat> to investigate, and to learn, and to know more. Put that obscene logo up there. Uh, but um, you know, in spite of that, 
Nobody starts out really knowing anything. And and when you're young, you always have to go on what other people tell you, and you go based on summations that you're initially handed. Well, here's the truth, you know, and and here's the a little broader view of the truth, but it's still childlike for the child. You know, like it's a little more complicated. But even when you're young and you think you really know the story, it's very uh, interesting to then go live, say, 30 years to realize um, what a fool you were. <laughs> and Or maybe not so much a fool, but at times definitely brutish. I mean, I was trying to be introspective, but some things, it's hard to pay attention to everything. You know, life is a complicated endeavor. And it's hard to notice everything. That's why there are things over time. That's what you have. You can't become totally fixed in your ways because there's no way you could have investigated everything that you think is right enough to the degree to which you could rely on that for the rest of your life. There's no way you could have done that to everything you think. You know, that's why I said I'd like the parable of the wineskin, but, I, you know, and I endeavor to never become an old wineskin. Well, that's impossible. With men, this is impossible. With God, nothing is impossible. And having lived by that mentality, the Lord has never let me down on that one. And it, and it's not like, I don't think over time it's led to like deep heresy in any way. I was watching a, a video on heresies. I'm like, I might have said something vaguely Nestorian at some time, but I didn't, you know, I not I, I have no conviction in that direction, certainly. And I, you know, as I, I think about, it, I'm like, okay, well, whatever. I'd have to, you know, I'd like to know what all the scriptures are that make it just as it was said in the video. But I, you know, I didn't disagree in principle. <laughs> and that, and that's just the idea that oh, oh, the son eternally submits to the father. And I was like, have I ever said that? I, mi- I might have heard that. I don't know if I said that. I certainly don't hang my hat on that. But um, in the sense that if if they have a relationship that is a father son relationship, that's eternal. I don't understand why that, at least in that capacity, they, there was not submission. And of course, not in the capacity that they both are one God. There's no submission there at all because their will is exactly identical. I, 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 you know, and I don't know. I didn't even think there was a point to be made there. Um, anyways, like it didn't, it, I was like, it's, I didn't even understand how the heresy exactly worked. But anyways, but. Over time, I look back and I'm like, okay, I thought I knew things. And I, so I, I, my predictive model would tell me that there's also things I don't know now. You know, so I'd be wise. And so I, I, I know, actually, and this is the, the, the capacity of being wise, is to just realize how stupid you are and how woefully ignorant you still remain. You know, a lot of people like to parlay their experience into authority, you know, they want people to take what they say as authoritative. I, you know, I only ask people to take what I say as sincere. And so you can then take that and apply and examine it and decide whether you think it's authoritative, but that would be from the Lord because the spirit would confirm it. I'm not here to lay authority on you. You know, my, not mine. And they don't always do that, but they also, they don't necessarily use it as authority, like to f- command people around, but just to justify their money-making enterprise. Well, I'm just an important man of God. Well, how is that? Well, look how much money I'm making. <laughs> you, know, you can tell I'm an important preacher because people give me lots of money. Have you seen my house? <clears throat> yeah. It's, it's pretty obvious. Someone's showing like, the places these people live. It should be obvious. But it's not people like, but he praises Jesus, and look how God blesses him. I don't think he's blessed. You know, I, I don't think that's what blessing looks like. You're confused. Your heart is perverted with covetousness when you think like that. And that's usually the case. A lot of us, you know, and a lot of Americans are going to be in for a rude awakening. I think we are very decadent. You know, we're full of ourselves. We don't care about trampling other people's rights. We got a we gotta comeuppance coming, man. If the Lord is the Lord. Sorry, folks. You know, I mean, you love Jesus and all that. Well, then, you know, uh, I'm about to get angry there. It's like, cause don't come to me about that stuff when you don't, you know, it's like your neighbor isn't just the guy living next door. He's the guy who lives the next country over. Good fences make good neighbors. Oh, indeed. (laughs) Oh, indeed. But the problem, you know, but the thing is when you, you know, it's called blowback and people come back. (laughs) 
Well, my country's ruined. Where should I go? May I should go to the country that ruined my country? Yeah. But I, look at here. I, even now, I don't know everything. I surely don't think that. I think I know less than I did when I started out. Because when I started out, I didn't know how ignorant I was. And now I know I'm much more ignorant than I knew back then. <laughs> if that makes any sense at all. I, have, I, I, I understand the degree of the problem. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's what it is. It's like, you know, back then I thought like, well, you know, study a bit and learn. It's like, no, no, there's a much bigger degree of a problem. God is not just like looking for you to p- go through some motions. He's going to hand you your little trophy. Know where we, we stand here. This is what some of the wisest men ever have said. I don't know anything. I don't have the understanding of a human being. I'm more like an animal than anything else. I haven't learned wisdom. I don't have the knowledge of the holy. Why? And ultimately, you know why? Because he lacked the knowledge of Christ. He needed to know the name. He needed to also know, like, what well, also like all the things like about, like when it says all this promissory stuff in the wisdom. All right, I heard all this wisdom. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Oh, sure. There's gonna be. You know, the righteous will ultimately triumph, the proverb says, and the wicked are ultimately going to be destroyed. There's kind of like a, like I said, there's very much an annihilationist spirit to the book of Proverbs. There's certainly no sign of, and we'll put the thumbscrews to them. You know, that's not really it. Okay. Who's gone there? You tell me, uh, oh, you know, okay. I guess someone could have said, well, there was Elijah. And they would have been known at his time, so. But. I don't think that's what it means so much. You know what I mean, like, like, yeah, okay, then Elijah and Enoch supposedly also went up. But not, like we say, as Christ ascended into heaven. Because Christ ascended to heaven in triumph from the dead, like we're talking about here. Not just like in some sketchy rescue operation, which we're, we don't even really know what the end thereof is okay he elijah went up by heaven uh by a whirlwind into heaven and that's all we ever hear of him we don't know nothing he isn't enthroned on high and 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 all that stuff we never heard pretty tell nobody knows right and the jews have even a whole tradition around it right not much more is said that's why they, they thought is john the baptist elijah you know what do I think? I don't know. I got a whole lot of thoughts. I don't want to descend into it. Well, you know, it is actually a worthy topic here. It's not off topic. But, you know, also the same thing with Enoch. He was not for the Lord took him. Didn't mention the whirlwind and chariots, but whatever. And okay, we haven't heard hide nor hair of him since. Jesus, on the other hand, I called on his name and the power of God came on me. So I know he's alive. At least I know it. A lot of people don't. Okay, too bad. He knows he's alive also. And he knows his name. What is his son's name? The name is Jesus Christ. Yeshua. As they say in the Hebrew tongue. I felt like Arnold Murray there. You know, but it's true. You know. I don't mind throwing that out for people. I just don't like to get relig- get too uh, superstitious about it. I like the word religious over the word. <laughs> I like superstitious for things. I'm going to stop calling good religion religion i'm not gonna call that religion i'm not gonna call bad religion religion i'll call it superstition at least some of it certain aspects that are just like you know it's it's too much about like the power of like the sound of the words not like you know like (laughs) what empowers my word is the meaning and also god like that that is his speech what it means (laughs) His name, the name of Jesus, that the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. It doesn't matter if they say it differently in other parts. It's, it's at his fame. The son of God who rose from the dead, ascended into heaven in victory. No one else has ascended like that. As promised in the wisdom, you know, the knowledge of the holy. You know, to me, that, that, that's what I'm reading into this because it feels, well, also, because Paul also kind of, who shall ascend into the depths that is to bring up Christ from the dead? You know, Paul spoke similarly of this kind of a, of an idea that it has to do with his resurrection and his bar- death and bar- and his death. I 
or descend, and also no man, Jesus himself said it, no man hath ascended into heaven, except he that came down from heaven, descended from heaven. That's not descended into the grave. You know what I mean? Because this is talking about one who has, who has ascended into heaven and or descended. He descended first. Gather the wind in his fists. Peace be still. Who is this that commands the wind and the sea? What is his name? What is his son's name? If thou canst tell. You know, they think, are you talking about God? No, I'm talking about his son. Who has gathered the winds in his fists? Who hath bound the waters in a garment? Who hath established all the ends of the earth? What is his name? They didn't know. That's why he's like, I don't have any wisdom. I don't know what his name is. That's, that's, a, that's a little thing left out. I don't have anything smart to say about that. I mean, we do. You know, thank God. You know, but the, but see, that, you know, like what I'm saying is, do you think that person needs good works to be saved? No. <laughs> you say, my name is Jesus. You are looking for me. Those who, you know, who, who love, who keep, what was it? Those who fear God and do righteousness. You know, to, they are they, within the realm. There's mercy there. Nobody's perfect. You need mercy, though. It's like, do you have to be mostly good to get mercy? Well, I'll tell you what. The Lord shows mercy on some really evil people. People still hate the Apostle Paul because he was an enemy of the gospel initially. You'll hear people like really still anti-Pauline. Which I, I want to forgive them for it a little bit. I get their point, but like I just think they misread Paul. They just don't know him so well, and uh, because he points out a lot of obvious things about Christianity that are sort of like, um, you know, dangerous. Like I said like about like the, like you know you can in the in the sense that like this means you can sin all you like technically, but he he addresses that issue in order to say God forbid. Don't think you can technicalities work like that with God. This is a relationship, not a, you're not a, not a, uh, you know what I mean? Not some, not some sort of, you know, magic contract, like with a demon, you know what I mean? Where, where poof, it, it comes into existence and then the writing and like, aha, there's a, there's a loophole here. You know, that's almost like, and now I'm saved even though I'm evil. No, <laughs> no, there's no loopholes. There's no, there's no, there's no tricking. There's no hold it off to the last moment. And repent, you know, some may, you see people getting in that way, but they're not consciously doing it. The man on the cross crucified with Jesus, whom Christ promised the kingdom. There's no evidence that he was doing this cynically. You know what I mean? So don't think that you can do it. Anyways, all of this, you know, this is our Lord. He is the one. I can tell. Every word of God is pure. He is a shield to them that put their trust in him. Again, the word of God is pure. But like I said, when we talk about the Bible being the word of God, not every word in the Bible is the word of God, of course. Like there's the guy, though it is part of God's word, as we say. What we mean by that is that the Bible, all the books in the Bible belong in the Bible, except maybe Esther, right? <laughs> I don't know. I have a prejudice against that because Arnold Murray turned me against it. And I never found a reason to be more in favor of it. Because it's just kind of a, um, because it, like as a book that's heading towards the intertestamental period, it's a little too vindictive for me. And also they dared not put the name of God into it, except in the form of these acrostics. Because I could tell their superstition had already, it seems like a byproduct of something else that belongs in the Apocrypha, honestly. You know, it's a wonderful story on some level. I mean, it also involves the slaughter of the guy's family at the end, of course, you know. Was it just him or was it his whole family and all pertained to him? I forget. I gotta go I gotta go back and check Esther. Maybe I'm giving it the wrong thing. And I'm not saying what I'm you know, and I'm just saying that because there's Rabshika speaking to the men on the wall and he talks about do eating obscene things, you know. And it's all true. So that's this is the word of God. But what he was coming out of his mouth was not God's word, but it is God's word because it's in the Bible, you know. But that's just more of a label. You know, like I said, we want the words of God are pure. 
And so it's speaking of that which comes truly out of the mouth of God. I mean, now, it can come at the mouth of a mediator. It, it has to because, and well, because what's going to happen is, first, the man of God, the oracle, is going to hear the word of God. And that's, okay, there's no, there's no uh, mediator. It's just coming straight from God, mediated through me to me. You know, and I, I don't even trust that mediation entirely. But, I, but what else are we going to do? What else are we going to do? You know, people say, oh, yeah, you're delusional about when you think God gave you the Holy Spirit. I'm like, well, I understand why you would say that. But since I am more familiar with my state of mind at the time and my general state of mind all the time, I'm going to say, uh, I'm, I'm going to actually go with what I think is reality and you know and you can do you know do as you please you know, as as you please you know but um <laughs> the testimony of God is true and when you speak the truth of God it's God's word um you do not we'll talk about the shield but you do not add unto his words now you can be on a superstitious level about that where it's like, oh, you know. Now, certainly, you don't. Want, what, what you don't want to do is to add, to alter. You know what I mean? It's the one thing to say, to take like the words of the Lord, and to magnify them. That's a form of addition. You know what I mean? I'm going to magnify the word of God. But that's not, just like we talk about fear. Like there's a good fear, bad fear, right? If there's a good fear and a bad fear, there can be a good version of adding to God's word in a sense of magnifying it, clarifying it, making it easier to understand. That is an addition. That's what teachers are supposed to do. And so there's going to be, you know, um, exposition and exploration and investigation of all these things, right? Where we look into them and we're, and we're sort of adding to the word, but not in a negative sense where I'm sitting here saying, well, well, we're trying to find out the truth. We're not trying to pervert it. And if I, and my trust always is that, like I say, even when I get it wrong, I'm getting it wrong in a right way. Meaning that may not be what this passage is saying, but it's still true according to what God's word says overall. Meaning we may not be in, interpreting that verse correctly because of our limitations of our understanding of interpreting in Hebrew and there may be some something happened to it along the way somebody got a letter wrong and now it just doesn't read right anymore that has happened in a few places it's just consequence of being in the world the, the word of God is incredibly intact considering how long it's been around and how many hands it's been through it's in my opinion of course but um he's in only in my opinion my opinion is the right opinion <laughs> course I, otherwise i wouldn't give it you know i don't you know thinking you know the truth is always seems arrogant but we can only you know humility is something you have to have in your heart and part of that is not worrying too much about people thinking you're something not humble you know like i don't really worry about people thinking i'm proud because it just happens I, it's happened to me all the time in my life and so i'm sort of well equipped for it and also, I know that I have danger of pride. It's not like I think I'm like the world's most humble man. That's not true. I just, you know, I try to live in reality. Okay. So, <clears throat> we don't want to add to God's words by alteration, like, you know, like, and this and that, you know, these commandments of men and doctrines of men, which don't add to your faith. They don't increase you one bit. All they do is they just... Uh, puff you up and make you feel like you're something. Wear a tassel on your thing. Go to church on Saturday. No on Sunday. No on Wednesday. Go to, you know, do this, do that. Washing of pots and cups and many such like things do ye. But the weightier matters of judgment, mercy, and faith, it's absolutely gone. There's no, there's no, neither high nor hair. That's the word, the phrase of the day. <laughs> I just like to say, neither high nor hair. He is a shield unto them, put their trust in him. Right? And, you know, hey, I don't mind that I take the rebuke of the Lord. I don't always get it right. And I'm not, I'm usually not a liar because I'm not consciously trying to do anything. I'm just a learner. You know? Like all of us. We're under a schoolmaster. It's not the same, you know, like if you take a test and you get the answer wrong, you're not a liar. You know what I mean? Like you're not a liar. It's not B, it's C. You liar. 
<laughs> Imagine if when you got a grade, like you get one wrong on a test, they're like, liar, A minus. So, you know, that's what I'm saying. Mistakes and stuff like that or not understanding something exactly is not the same as being a liar. Being a liar is when you're like, like I said, it's. <laughs> I don't want to pick on this particular individual because I don't know them well enough. But it immediately came to mind a guy who had his own view of the Trinity. You know, well, he denied the Trinity. Okay, fine. Well, then explain to me. Give me your explanation. Let's hear. And I want you to account for all the things I'm going to toss at you that I had to account for that made me back off from my anti-Trinitarian talk. And I just, and I'm not like, I still will be critical of certain aspects. Like I understand, well, not critical so much as I'm sympathetic. I understand how people are like, well, it's a word that's not in the Bible. I'm like, yeah, lots of words are not in the Bible. That's, that's really, you know, rapture ain't in the Bible and it's, it's a bad doctrine. And I, you know, but whatever, I, you gotta deal with it. And here's the thing. You gotta go to those scriptures and say, well, what true or not? What's a true doctrine that's in the Bible? Well, uh, I was going to say, <laughs> uh, I keep coming up with ones that aren't particularly attractive to me. Like, I came up with transubstantiation, <laughs> and I didn't want to say it, because I'm just piling up the evidence on the opposite side of what I said. Um, but um, the hypostatic union, right? That that's not in the Bible, but it's, I mean, it's not a word you find in the Bible, but it's true. And it's like the... Uh, it's rep the representation of the relationship between the Father and the Son and the Spirit. The uh, that's the that's what that is. Those little lines where it says "is," I think that, <laughs> and then there's "is not." I don't. You know, it's hard to. I don't feel you have to break your back trying to describe God. You just don't want to describe him incorrectly. Uh, we want to get this right. We don't want to make up bad analogies. God's like this. God's like that. We don't know what God is like. Let's be wise. Right? I tell you, all I really know is his name and his son's name. And that's the best part. Get that right. And then the other stuff, just don't get too cute. That's the thing. It's like, people want to be all... I get it. I wanted to preach. Not really preach, actually. At first, I was just like, I'll serve you. And I thought, I'll become a priest or a monk or something. And then my my friend was like, well, you, you like girls, don't you? And I'm like, yeah, I do. That's a problem. I was like, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, and then so I immediately dropped the whole become a priest thing, but I started reading the Bible on my own. I'm, I guess I have to teach myself to be a man of God. That's literally, that's literally what I did. And I found Arnold Murray. And um, and he helped me get through the Bible. He helped me understand a lot of the Bible, you know, as far as just the basics. You know, mingled with stuff he was adding to it, though, as far as I'm concerned. And adding to it, you know, like, there was, you know, like when they would talk about the souls on the ark and they would be like, Adamic souls, because we've got to make it our doctrine. We've got to add these ideas in. We're not reading between the lines. We're sticking little notes between the lines about what we think it ought to mean. Careful. And, you know, and, and here's the thing is sometimes people do it even consciously. That's the most wicked of all. Because I think Arnold Murray was genuinely convinced of his doctrine. You know, he was genuinely in his own little world there, his being... It, he was faithful to what he thought he was being faithful to, I do think, at least doctrinally. Doctrinally, I, I think so. He was convinced of his rightness. I don't think he was a, you know, he thought, and a lot of these guys, I do think they are convinced of their rightness, many of them, and that helps them. And because of their success, they use that as a shield against criticism because they're important, and they also use it as a shield against sin because they think, I'm important, I'm successful, and therefore, this is what happens to guys like Bill Hybels, Fareed Zachariah. They start, I can like start being sexually um, suggestive with my lady coworkers, even though I'm married, even though they're not, even though that's inappropriate behavior towards any woman, you know, single, whether you're single and she's single, you shouldn't be making sexually suggestive comments. You should be finding out if, you know, if you're interested in that person that way, you should be endeavoring to find out what kind of person they are before you actually, you know, because sexual things you could tell right away, <laughs> right? You know, if you'd like to have sex with someone in about three seconds, maybe, but whether you should marry them could take weeks. That's why I say you got to ignore that first impulse. That first impulse is worthless. That assessment, you know, you're better off blinding yourself. That's why I tell girls, you know, don't wear too much makeup. My wife made it easy for me. To, I wasn't thinking about it because she wasn't all hot. 
Because hot has to be put on. Almost nobody is hot with their plain face. They just aren't. And in, in, in just regular street clothes. I've seen, you know, like, there was a book around my house when I was growing up on boudoir photography. It was, like, you know, those sexy pictures women get. And then there's a picture of the, 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 mo- the model they used as the example, who's an actual model. I mean, but they take all the makeup off and she looks, you know, kind of plain. Not very remarkable. Certainly not hot, you know. Yeah, that one. Well, the righteousness and yeah. But anyways, they need to be uh, mind. They're not mindful of the things. That they become distracted. They think that they, and they justify. They think, well, because I'm such an important man, or I do God's work and he forgives me and, and I have all this tremendous burden on me, so it's acceptable for me. You know, God gives me this bit of mercy or whatever, you know, to do these things. And they talk themselves into sin. And then, uh, and it makes me question then uh, the very foundation is like, do you, I mean, some of them are sincere. I was meaning like Arnold Murray, but like some of them, I think, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know where the fear of the Lord is. You know what I mean? That they fear not even men. You know what I mean? Like, like, do you, I mean, you don't even have to fear the Lord to consider like, yeah, I probably shouldn't be hitting on the young ladies that work in the office. I'm married and I'm the big pastor that like doesn't reflect good on me. Even yeah, it's just bizarre, you know. I thank God that uh, I'm not tempted in any such way because you know I don't know, and I don't want to blame their wives, but you know I don't know. I can thank mine, so I've never been tempted to stray. But um, the Lord is a shield to them that put their trust in Him. That's what I was saying. You know, the the we must trust the Lord in the fi- you know in the face of all the danger that could be ahead and likely is whether whether it's the end of the world or it isn't. It's the turning of a time. You know, I mean, there's a time for every purpose, every heaven under heaven, and we are in what they call a turning. And I, I'm not going to deny that things are moving right. But whatever time it is, it's like you must realize that you're on Earth for a reason. You know. And how should one chase a thousand and two put ten thousand to flight? I fear not the enemy. You know, like I don't send forty men with guns to get me. If the if they try to hurt me, the Lord may strike them all dead. That's what He did in the days of Elijah, and that's what I would trust, because it's so absurd. Because I will never do anything more harmful than speak the truth. Now that's very dangerous to some people, but you know to react so much to such a small thing. The fact that they are watching small people, I think, is funny. Uh, it is funny because it's like it, they're empower. They empower that, you know. They 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 charge it up, and uh, and it's foolish because um, because the Lord will revenge Himself of those who are bloody and who have no mercy. Hmm. Okay, so let's move on. Two things have I required of thee. Deny me not before I die. You know, there's a caution against being a false prophet. You know, I read it with some pause, you know, considering I wrote a song that sounds a lot like I'm speaking in the name of the Lord. And in fact, it truly is, I guess, because it's like, I, you know, was my tongue in my cheek? Sort of, but not really. <laughs> Do I believe? Yes. I, I, you know, I'm not saying put it in the Bible. I'm saying, no, that's. What I prayed and I fasted, and that's the song the Lord gave me. So, a warning for Israel. Not particularly, I thought it was pretty pedestrian, honestly. Um, you know, it didn't seem like, like, it seemed like pretty much boilerplate standard thing that ought to be said in such an eventuality. People start ripping up the women and dashing people in pieces. Two things have I required of thee. Deny me them not before I die. Remove far from me vanity and lies. Give me neither poverty nor riches. Feed me with food convenient for me. There's two things, but they're kind of three there. But they're actually together, obviously, right? The give me, you know, this is all one big thing. Right? Give me neither poverty nor riches. Feed me with food convenient for me. 
lest I be full and deny thee and say, Who is the Lord? Or lest I be poor and steal and take the name of my God in vain. And it's so fascinating to me because it's like, this is actually really complicated. It's like, first of all, two things give me, is one of them remove from me vanity and lies? Or is that two things? And then it, from that stems everything else. Because vanity and lies can lead to poverty. It can lead to riches, ill-gotten riches. I like this. I remember my pastor used to, when I had a pastor, he used to say this one, give me neither poverty nor riches. It's a good, it's a good moniker, you know? I don't want to be impoverished. I don't think of myself as impoverished. I talk about sometimes my poverty, but it's American poverty, which on a world scale is like, you know, it's... It's like comparing American transportation to American tra to to transportation from a thousand years ago. You know, it just doesn't even make sense the comparison. Like the, nobody, I have dozens of robot slaves to do my work. I mean, I count every machine, every tool, power tool, the washing machine, the di you know, I don't have a dishwasher, uh, washing machine, the dryer, uh, even the furnace that you know that supplies itself with gas. I have to go cut wood. I don't have a woodcutting slave or anything like that, because I don't need one. I, I use that word loosely. I'm sorry if it offends people. I'm not talking, but whatever. I robot slaves. You know, I have an impact wrench, and it's like this. It's like I used to have to do those kind of operations without it. You know, I used to have an air-powered one, but whatever. But before that, I used to have to just use the, um, the tire rod. You know, and it was harder to take off. More work. I'm assisted by all kinds of machines and all my endeavors i travel at speeds that men have never traveled at for thousands of years i mean i have covered more miles in 50 years than some people than many did in their whole lifetime and i am an untraveled person on this planet like i'm not a, tra a world traveler since i became in a after i got married other than wisconsin which i'm near the wisconsin border i'm trying to think if i've ever left the state yeah, I've never left my region. Let's say that, I believe. The farthest I went was to the state cap. The farthest I've been away since, I think, I went up into, way up into Wisconsin from, with a church trip. That was one thing. Oh, I was in Iowa for a, a, a performance, right? So whatever. But I mean, they, I mean, I've been up to Wisconsin. I've been over to Iowa. I live in Illinois. Uh, I haven't been to Indiana in years. That was that'd be before I got married. I am not a, a world traveler. But just... And the 10 miles back and forth from ta to town that I do, you know, it would take, you know, to take a half day maybe walking. Yeah, 10 miles. 10 miles won't take a half a day. 20 miles will take a half a day. Take a quarter of the day, get 10 miles. You know, all morning. Whatever. You know, maybe that's not exactly. People maybe had to walk 10 miles a day all the time. You know, it's like, okay. Point is, I did it without having to walk. I've been walk. I walk too, but I don't have to walk all the way to town. We have riches that no man has ever experienced before, and we don't really appreciate it. We think we we got no tribulation coming. God's gonna take us away before anything bad happens, right? As people are like being slaughtered, and they're, and they're they're just turning a deaf ear to it. The American church is cheerleading Israel. Oh, kick him out, build that temple, build that temple. They're going to build a temple to Antichrist if that happens. If you're, you know, like, and even if you want to see that, you know, hey, even so come Lord Jesus. It's like, even so, how is it going to happen? How am I participating in it? You know what I mean? It's like, I don't want, you know, I don't want to lay the foundations of Satan's temple. Are you kidding me? And like I said, there's already a time. I regard that Dome of the Rock as a temple to God, you know, generic in that sense. Because, like, if Satan has to stand in a temple of God, I don't see why he can't stand in that one, and it'd be just as abominable as standing in a Jewish one. I mean, what's the? how is it less an abomination to have someone claiming to be God on the Temple Mount? Does it matter what building it is there? So I don't think that's necessary, and, and, and I don't think it's up to us to force prophecy of our own volition. I mean, talk about adding to his words. It's like, we have the right to do Amalek. Hey! Support us, America. Oh, yeah, we're going to support you. You can just, you know, 
do things that we, we you know, ethnic cleansing is it supposed to be bad, you know? I mean, how would you like to be ethnically cleansed out of your state when they decide whiteness is something that people don't like anymore, you know? I thought we were all going to agree to live in peace. That's how we should have done. That's what we should have done. But some people just won't, they won't have it. <laughs> like I say, give us time and we'll do it. If the, otherwise, the Lord, if the Lord come, the Lord come. If the enemy take over, then the Lord is coming. The cool part is if we, if we are defeated, that means it's the devil. Because no one else can overcome the saints. That's, what I, that's why we will triumph. Unless it's Satan himself. You know? So I say, I, I, nobody's killing me, man, in the end times. Not unless it's the devil himself. I don't care. I don't care what you send. And if I got somebody else with me, you better send a whole lot more than that. It's like, you fear words. You better fear words. If you fear my words, you better be in terror. You want to shut my mouth? You better stand back, buddy. You shut this mouth. <laughs> the flames will burst out of my lips. Come out of my nostrils. Okay, feed me the food convenient for me. I think, you know, convenient, I believe, usually means something like appropriate, meaning not, uh, you know, like good food. You know, that's wisdom. Let's look at what it says here. Convenient is choke. Uh, yeah. In, in particular, because they're Jews, this is choke, which means something prescribed or owed, a statute. Like, you know, I owe my property taxes, or you owe it to God to do certain things. There's, and it's also translated allotment, boundaries, conditions, custom, decree, due, fixed order, you know, necessary food. You know, something prescribed, you know, the, the right food. You know, and the, and the implication is moderation. And, um, and also not just, like, they had clean and unclean. We got to be able to tell the difference between good food and bad food, all right? And eating things that are disgusting and things that are not disgusting. It's, it's, um, it's confusing because there's a lot of different voices out there, you know? But like I say, the things that are closer to nature are going to be better. The things that are not sprayed with chemicals are going to be better, you know? And there are a lot of things sprayed with chemicals. Uh, and the less of that you take into your body, the better. You know, the, the, here's the thing. I know no poison can touch me. But if I willingly drink it, it just might. You know what I mean? If I knowingly take it in, it'll hurt me. If I know it's poison and I keep drinking it, or I don't try to... It's hard to get it all out. And I'm not sure... I'm not entirely convinced that all of these things we that we are told are a threat to our health are present in all the foods that they say they are. But... You know, I try to, as much as possible, minimize my exposure to pesticides and chemical, uh, you know, the chemical stuff. Um, pesticides, chemical, uh, what's the other thing besides, pe well, fungicides, whatever. Roundup. F herbicides, that's what I wanted. Herbicides. Pesticides and herbicides. You want to avoid eating too much of that, and that's part of it. Food that's overprocessed, stuff that's not food, stuff that artificial sweeteners, artificial fatteners, artificial, all that artificial stuff, avoid like the plague. Your body probably isn't doing it right and it's just shoving it away in the corners and giving cancer something to think about eating. Mm hmm? You know? So, you, wanna, you know, freak, you, know, you should fr fast from time to time, help your body break down those cells that are getting deformed. Because your body's constantly packing things away. Imagine if you were in your house and you were just putting groceries away constantly. You know, never stopping. This truck after truck just comes with food. And it's like, God, take the conveyor belt offline once in a while and grease the wheels and take out the, the you know, change the bearings out and all that. Because if you don't, that better not have been a mouse. I think it was just something else. Like a cord. Anyways, that's so distracted me. Yeah, but, but, but what I said. The good food. And that also goes for spiritually, of course. Wouldn't, we would not want to neglect that aspect of it. Because a lot of these things, I, I have a spiritual thought about it, of course. Poverty of spirit. Nor, you know, happy are the poor in spirit. 
But again, we must recognize our spiritual need and our spiritual emptiness and our, you know, and in that sense, it is a good thing, but it's not good to over sorrow or to over rejoice, nor to be overly, you know, in, you know, mentally impoverished, lest you become overcharged with that and not, you know, appreciate the riches that God has given you else. Where is your thankfulness and rejoicing going to come from? You know, so there is a place for all those things. You know, you should acquaint yourself with grief, but not be ashamed of laughter. You know, I, I see no reason. Except at an appropriate time. Obviously, there's a time for every purpose under heaven. Let me not be full. You know, I don't want to be too satisfied. That's why I was saying, I, you know, this is also my view of heaven. I, you know, people talk about heaven being monotonous, and I'm like, I don't, I don't think you have truly considered these things. Monotonous. Because you know what they think infinity is like? They think it's like point one six 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 six. I use that number. All right, point one three 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 three. You know? Like one third, it's an it's an infinite thing, right? They think that's infinity, but the infinity of God is more like pi. It's not like this boring forever. Their mind, they, these people have not opened their minds properly to understand what kind of infinity God would pro- produce. If something looking like pi, you're like five, six, nine, eight, four, three, one. Ah, 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 ah. Not like not like it's gonna drive you nuts. But the point is, you're not gonna be like knowing what's coming next. I mean, you can't. You can calculate, I suppose, like you know pi, and it it's it's all there, but it never repeats. So it doesn't get exactly monotonous because you have to keep calculating it. You can't just let it go and it's like, well, it's all gonna be threes. No, it's going to be something different. So you, you, the only way you know it's going to be different is you got to go there and see it. They don't understand anything about eternity or heaven. Fools. They haven't even considered. I even hear them talking because I literally don't even think about that. And then they say it's monotonous and I listen to their argument. And I'm like, you don't even understand infinity from because you have a human mind. They don't have the divine insight to God where God's gonna open your mind it's like no you're gonna be looking at time and space in a whole different way and so and if if that's you know if that's how important your masturbation is to you I don't know what to tell you dude you know because that that's what it comes down to they don't want they don't want they don't want to heal then don't don't serve any master go to hell because that's what's going to happen. I don't want to be full and deny the Lord. Oh, heaven's so boring. I'm so full. I ate all the donuts. Okay, and that's and, and honestly, when I listen to him, I, I feel sorry for the guy because he had the, the normal Christian garbage about heaven, about what it's like, people of small minds and of little understanding talking about things that they have not even looked into. Or asked at his hand and speak as if they know. Just shut up. And they deny the Lord. Because they're so full. They know so much. You know, I don't need God. I got all. With my hands, I built this all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why well, be poor? And I, and I take things into my mind. I lose faith because I'm so poor. I got. Hey. I, I understand. I've had, uh, I've fantasized a couple of times when I really, I'm like, I would be like, you know, uh, I always just don't go beyond. I think about things like, okay, what, well, you know, don't want to hurt anybody. It's always like a late night bank heist <laughs> because I don't want to encounter people. There's no way, it's just no way. You get caught, you know, and uh, I'm not that smart I, and I'm not that bold, right? Um, and, and then, and so what about taking the name of your God in vain? Well, there's a multiple ways you could look at that. Again, if I were to steal, you know, I committed myself to the Lord. You know, committing myself to stealing is pretty bad. You know, especially, you know, outright stealing. Not like, uh, I don't know. All stealing is bad. But obviously, like lust, there's different levels. There's, you know, you can steal bigger, steal small. I mean, walking away with the bank's pen, they, they, they don't care. They're like, oh, that's fine. Because they get them and they put their name on it. It's advertising. They know people walk away with them. 
That's you know. They, they, otherwise, they'd if they don't want, they put a chain on it so they don't lose them. You know. And, uh, or they ask them back, or you keep a personal pen. But a lot of times those pens, they put there for their customers. I don't walk off with it all the time. I don't like to try to take advantage of it. Some people probably do. But uh, occasionally, actually, I, do I think anything of it? No. You know, a couple of times, you know, but I'll bur- like I said, I think I've burned this good work in the past. So I, I don't consider it a good work. It's just doing the right thing, right? We do, I, and I don't consider it to my own horn. It's so small. Yeah, you know, I walked out, realized... I hadn't checked out an item in my in my basket. It was my mistake. So I went back in. I'm like, hey, I got to pay for this. I forgot You know what I was going through. It was in the cart, and they didn't notice it. And it's not on the receipt. No, oh, thanks. You know, I was like, whatever, good. Thanks, bye. No big deal. Right? I don't consider that a good deed. I'm just not burning myself in hell. <laughs> uh, right? And so because it's not because it was my mistake. Now, under certain circumstances, I might even give myself a pass if it was small enough. In fact, there was an item once... I was, it was like literally a 99 cent pair of gloves and it got lost in the wood and I got it home and I'm like, I ain't taking this back. And it's like, God knows I have been ripped off by that store so many times and just let it pass. So I'm just like, I'll call this even and I bet they'd feel the same way because I'm a big customer there. <laughs> and then uh, not a big shot or anything like that, but whatever. I, I shop there all the time and I usually try to keep it square. I mean, like I said, not usually. I always try to keep it square. Always. But, um... And also one time, you know, I, it was something was in my bag and it wasn't on the receipt. They'd missed scanned it. Once if I get that, if I if it's right there at the register, I'll be like, oh, you missed this, or I don't know if I noticed that. But if I get home, am I going to trouble myself? No. I'm like, eh, that's their mistake. You know that happens. Whatever. I, I'm not going to trouble myself because they've again. There have been many injustices in the past where I was like, mm, and I just take it as like, okay, you know, I'm I'm sure they'd be happy to know I'm a little less angry at the free gift. Okay. But it's another thing to take out a desire. It's like I said, you make a mistake, an accident, something happens. That's not the same as stealing. Yeah, every idle word. We want to account for those things. We want to be conscientious. We don't want to, you know, what if someone, you know, we got caught. I mean, a, a little thing like that, there's no catching me. Because even if someone was like, hey, those gloves, you didn't pay for them. I'd be like, oh, yeah, I forgot. And, you know, it's a big deal. They're 99 cents. But when you steal to provide for yourself i mean that would be significant stealing my pair of gloves ain't gonna pay my bills i don't know about you right it's like it ain't gonna do much for me like i always laugh at the thought of any of the things that accidentally if they ever got messed up i'm pretty good at checking myself out and when they check me out more mistakes are made when i'm checked out than when i'm checking myself out i think um <clears throat> but um not, it's some places let's just let's just be fair some places have great checkers but um yeah, I, um, you know, when you go out to intentionally steal to provide, you got to steal bigger. It takes planning. And so, um, you know, and as a man of God, it's like, well, what, you know, what am I about in life? Am I about this, this stealing thing I'm going to do? Or am I, you know, what am I putting my mind and effort into? You know, some sort of grand scheme to get money, to get rich quick. You know, what happens to people get rich quick? They will not be blameless. Not be innocent, I think is what I said. Yeah, and you forget God when you're full. But when you steal, also you may be, you know, um, because of your activity, you may be asked to take an oath and testify. Well, where were you? Oh, I wasn't part of it at all, sir. No, no, no. You know, and then you end up lying. I thought that may be part of, you know, uh, taking the name of the Lord God in vain, often being in the, in the form of, <laughs> there are many forms of it. You know what I mean? Like I said, to me, as a servant, I've taken his name literally on myself as I am his slave. So it's like tattooed on my forehead. So if I'm a thief, you know, I've, I've, I've drugged the name of Christ into thievery. And all that is like, oh, all the things, <laughs> you know, and I've been a Christian my whole life. So I've, I've, drive, I've always been dragging him. Thankfully, we live in a society where everyone's Christian. And it's sort of like, well, we just have problems. Yeah, you know, I'm, at least I'm not a priest. At least I'm not head of a major church when those things are going on. That's the thing. You should be sorted out before you become a leader. You shouldn't be like leading. You know, I, I was just it baffles my mind. You know, these fresh out of seminary kids go there. Now they're a pastor. How well, hallelujah! It is a miracle because <laughs> even God's word says a man of that experience probably isn't qualified to lead. 
And for something to be true that was not true in God's word, that's a miracle I can't even comprehend because it's a contradiction that does not stand. It just doesn't. You know, stretch me not beyond my abilities. Ooh, we're almost at the end. Okay, well. So you may, it may be a form of false swearing, or it could be that concept of the, the name of your God in vain being that, like, we do things in the name of God. Anyone who takes up God's name better not do it in vain, right? And sometimes, like I said, when you're testifying is one of the times it does intersect with people's lives. Because most people are not teaching the, the word of God or claiming to speak for God. But if you were called into court, you may be asked to put your hand on the Bible and take an oath. And that's what we... that's. I think that's still how we do it in many places. I don't know. You get sworn in. By some authority. Because we all, you know, they do that because you they want you to say like, okay, you agree that you must adhere to the truth. Something true. Okay, so... I guess we'll pick it up at verse 10 to mo on Monday because we're right there and we just might as well just start there. We've talked about this and we're done. All right, thanks for joining me. look forward to being back again on Monday. Until then, remember the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. And here we go. Where is my music? Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever committeth sin is the servant of sin, and the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the Son abideth forever. If the Son therefore shall make you free, he shall be free indeed. I know that ye are Abraham's seed, but ye seek to kill me. Because my word hath no place in you. I speak that which I have seen with my father, and ye do that which ye have seen with your father.